This instructional video demonstrates the various steps in properly setting up the WIC 250 pump for operation. The first step should be selecting a suitable water source. This can be a forest stream, a pond or lake, or even a backyard swimming pool. Important factors to consider include sufficient water supply, depth, and whether or not the bottom consists of mud, sand, or small stones that could damage the pump end. Also ensure the pump is kept away from dry grass or brush and that the pump is on a fairly level base. Should you be using a dock or wooden platform, the pump may need to be secured so as not to move due to vibration. The intake connection to the pump consists of a foot valve and suction hose. The foot valve is equipped with a screen to keep out stones and other debris, plus a check valve that will prevent water from draining out of the hose line. They should be inspected to ensure there is no foreign debris, that the foot valve o-ring is correctly seated and that the check valve is functioning. The foot valve is then connected to the suction hose and since it will be entirely below the surface of the water, this connection only needs to be hand tight. The foot valve must be completely submerged and at least 6 inches or 15 centimeters below the surface to avoid a vortex effect that would allow air to enter the intake. In the case of a muddy or sandy bottom, the foot valve must be suspended at least 6 inches or 15 centimeters from the bottom. You can adapt with whatever you have at hand, such as uh, submerging a toolbox, tying the foot valve to a stake, using an empty plastic container to elevate it, or as demonstrated here. The pump end threads should be protected to avoid damage to the pump end, which would result in an expensive repair. Therefore, both the intake and discharge connections should be equipped with a thread protector or an adapter. The connection to the intake must be airtight, and a hose wrench is an important tool to ensure a proper connection. Next, since this is a centrifugal pump, we must fill the pump end with water, in other words, prime the pump end. And to do this, we are using a hand primer. Once the pump end is primed, we then connect the discharge hose. This pump uses a remote fuel supply. To set up this connection, we'll first open the air vent on the fuel tank. The remote fuel line then also needs to be primed, and to do this we depress the female end ball valve using a rigid device or a male connector as shown here. Then squeeze the priming bulb until a small amount of fuel comes out of the line. Do not use branch twigs or anything that may break off. We then connect the remote fuel line to the pump fuel connector, and the pump setup is now complete. Now it's time to start the pump, so let's take a look at the various steps to get the engine started and pumping water into the hose line. With the hose line connected, always ensure someone is attending to the nozzle, since a loose hose end under high pressure can whip violently if unsecured. To begin with, give two or three easy pulls on the recoil as shown here, in order to purge air in the fuel line, thus allowing fuel to flow. Depress the fuel line priming bulb until you notice fuel begin to flow into the plastic fuel line. At this point, stop priming to avoid possible flooding of the carburetor. Turn the on-off switch to the on position. For a cold engine start, the choke must be set to the closed or start position and the throttle set to start warm-up position. To start the engine, take a firm grip on the recoil, position the dogs and give a quick pull. Once the engine starts or when you hear the first ignition fire, set the choke to the open or run position. Allow for a 2 or 3 minute warm up period, then slowly increase the engine speed to the desired performance. And as mentioned earlier, ensure someone is attending to the hose nozzle. When you are ready to shut down the pump, an idle period of at least a minute is important to allow the engine to cool down. After the engine has been allowed to cool down, turn the on-off switch to the off position. Or, if you'll be transporting or storing the pump, then disconnect the fuel line and allow the carburetor to purge all remaining fuel. When disconnecting the discharge hose, it is important to prevent water from splashing on the hot engine. Therefore, it may be necessary to restrict the back pressure by either clamping the hose with a hose strangler or kinking the hose before disconnecting. 
To disconnect the suction hose, use the hose wrench to loosen the connection, then carefully unscrew until the suction hose can be removed. Next, pick up the pump from the opposite side of the muffler, then empty the water from the pump by alternately tilting the intake and discharge ends. Take particular caution not to touch the hot muffler, which could cause a severe burn. Finally, empty the water from the suction hose and also ensure any debris is completely removed from the foot valve. To view a typical pump setup with all the essential components and recommended accessories, go to our website at mercedestextiles.com and click on Pump Setups from the main menu. And to see the complete features and benefits video of the WIC 250 along with some of our other pumps, again go to the website and click Promotional Videos also found on the main menu. We have a worldwide network of distributors and to find the distributor nearest you, simply click the contact us box and we'll put you in touch with a qualified dealer or representative.